This is Rebel Therapist, a podcast for entrepreneurs who are trained as therapists and who want to level up their businesses, make a bigger impact, feel fulfilled, and be very well paid. I'm your host, Annie Schusler. Hey there. You're about to hear from four entrepreneurs who have created phenomenal programs beyond private practice. You're going to hear why one of these entrepreneurs needed to bring her farmer self to her program, why a solo mom realized she needed to create a different kind of program, why one psychologist finds her coaching program liberating, and why collaboration is so important. I'm really glad you've been with me on this series. This is the last of a six-part series where I'm sharing these phenomenal entrepreneurs with you. All right, before we get into these awesome people, I want to tell you that Create Your Program, the place where these four folks created their programs, is opening soon for enrollment. So make sure you're on the wait list so that you know when it opens and everything about it. This is a small group program with a lot of time with me. I'm saying that because that is one of the main questions that I keep getting is how many people are in it? It's going to be 17 max per cohort. And do you run these calls yourself or do you have like assistant coaches running these? I'm running all the calls. I'm on all the calls. I have some guest experts come in and I'm on those calls too. The calls I'm not on are run by a fantastic business mentor, Sonia Brewer who runs private events just for BIPOC participants. And those are in addition to all of the other calls. So yeah, this is a very hands-on program. So yeah, get on the wait list. Rebeltherapist.me slash create is where you're going to find a spot to sign up for the wait list so that you know when it opens. Let's get to Dr. Laura Casper, Rebecca Lee, Monica Bayan, and Gail Reich. First up, We've got Dr. Laura Casper. My name is Laura Casper. I am a psychologist in private practice in San Francisco, and I also have an executive coaching program called the Co-Founder Conflict Disruption Program. And my program's for co-founders who find themselves in those stuck, sticky, conflicted patterns that are hard to get out of and that they're having trouble moving the business forward because they're having communication uh, issues and unable to, to talk about things. The program is a six week one-on-one coaching intensive where we meet, if it's two co-founders, we meet for an hour and a half of a live session. There's pre-work before each session. Pre-work involves watching anywhere from a seven to maybe 15 minute video with some of the key tools and a reflection worksheet that goes along with the video. And after the first session, I give a a piece of video feedback somewhere between five and 10 minutes from what I noticed from the previous session. And they also watch that as pre-work as well. I created this program because I noticed that I was covering very similar material with my co-founders who were coming to me for coaching. And I wanted to create some kind of structured way that I could deliver the tools and that we could be practicing the tools in session, but that, but they'd already had exposure to these core tools for communication and conflict before so that the live sessions could really be about practice. And the outcome that people get is they, they get unstuck. My co-founders have made dramatic changes in only six weeks. It's really been remarkable to see uh, when they embrace the tools, when they practice them in their relationships outside, both with their co-founders or with their, you know, loved ones, partners, family, they improve. One thing that I've learned in the process of creating this program, and I'm speaking to in this moment, therapists who are pivoting and doing coaching programs like this is 
my clients in the co-founder program want me to be very active. They are interested in me stopping them and, you know, kind of being almost bossy with my feedback live in a session. And that is so different from the therapist position of, you know, empathic listener and, you know, giving feedback. I mean, I've always been a therapist that is a little bit more on the engaged interactive side uh, and, you know, giving feedback and giving my perspective. But I've been shocked by how much my coaching clients want a deep, deep, deep amount of feedback and engagement. They, you know, when I ask them kind of on a scale of one to 10, how active and how much do you want me to, to be? All of them are, you know, are say on the dial, like we want a 10. Uh, and I, I, I've been surprised by that. And it's been fun, actually. <laughs> it's playing out that people are, people are getting a lot. People are making a lot of change and they're open to the feedback. I think. I think sometimes as a therapist, you know, we think we have to spend a lot of time building a relationship in order to challenge people. And, and I, I think that's true, maybe more in the therapy context. But, but I think I'm just learning that in a coaching context, people are hungry for real, real feedback and real intervention, uh, in a concrete way that's been liberating, uh, and exciting for me. I, I've really enjoyed it. Hello, hello. My name is Rebecca Lee, and I am located in Central Washington State. And my program is for helping professionals, healers, change makers, those that tend to be givers, and we know who we are. The my program is called Burnout to Bravery, and it is a small group coaching program that happens over 10 weeks. And it's all focused around tapping into our landscape. It's about tapping into our vision, our authentic self, all for the aim of one, eliminating burnout as the basic, two, getting to that space of finding health again and finding ourselves again and rekindling that connection with what's most important to us. So I have to backtrack a little bit. Because when I say tap into your landscape, I usually get the question like, okay, what the heck are you talking about with landscape? Are we talking dirt? Yes, absolutely. We are talking dirt. So landscape is the dirt below our feet. It is the air we breathe. It is the everything that nourishes us physically, emotionally, socially, spiritually, Landscape being our story, our beliefs, our narrative, that foundation from which we live our lives. And so there's a huge piece of this program that's really looking at questioning and being curious about our own layered assumptions, beliefs, norms, those spaces that we may be conditioned to believe something about ourselves that inherently is harmful to our authenticity and harmful to our growth and our movement into these spaces that we are so passionate about. So when creating this program, putting it all together, you know, if I, if I'm reflecting back, I think one of the biggest mindset shifts that I had coming from a place of I would say a little bit of people pleasing, a little bit of perfectionism, like that's there. That's a real, very real thing. (laughs) I think it's a real thing for a lot of us, but having that mindset shift of if I'm going to create a program around authenticity, then I better show up authentically. I better show up as me. So that means me with all the quirks and the layered perspective and the funky things that some people might find interesting about me that I show up as a farmer. So I'm a 
I'm a social worker. I'm a therapist, but I'm a farmer. So guess what? In the program, you're going to get that layer too. And I found that I couldn't create a program. I couldn't talk about my program. I couldn't be in my program and really experience it until I owned who I am and what I find important. Therefore, I talk dirt. I talk landscape. I talk the seasons. We talk about when was the last time you really wintered? When was the last time you sat in spring? When was the last time that you really felt autumn and incorporated that in a part as a part of who you are? Um, so a lot of learning, learning and creating the program and now being in the space of providing this program and working with just shockingly profound individuals that are just at that point in their life that they're just, they're like, enough's enough. Something is going to be different and I'm taking the reins now and I'm going to do this differently. And I am going to put myself into a group of people that also are going to push the envelope and look at ourselves as important and look at ourselves as something that we have to prioritize if we're really going to do work as helping professionals, healers, givers, and change makers. Um, So another component of, of this connection with the business side of things and the philosophical background of the program itself is really looking at that idea of this movement with my business model. If my program is going to be wrapped around talking about the seasons, if my program is going to be wrapped around the landscape, then my business process, my boundaries, my how I navigate finances, how I navigate timeframes and setting things up and all the logistics that needs to go through that same filter of, am I incorporating seasonality into my business? Am I incorporating my landscape into my business? Am I ensuring that I really can be authentic because I am merging this very tactile business piece with that that is core and value-based and belief-based. So I, you know, developing the program, working in the program, having the experience of growth and movement and momentum in this program has been profound and thrilling and exciting. And the amount of growth is exhausting at times uh, because it can feel a bit exponential, but so rewarding and so invigorating. So thank you so much for listening and hearing a little bit about Burnout to Bravery. Hi, my name is Monica Bayan, and I am totally in love with my current offering. It's called Shine Your Light, and it is a one-to-one coaching program for busy moms. It's I don't know if there's another kind of moms, but it feels important to say. So it's for busy moms who have been keeping themselves small and are ready to uncover their true selves and really step into their magic. So I do like to have a goal or to have my clients set a goal that we work toward in the process to set a goal that they work toward in the process. And that helps to of shape or orient what we do, but reaching that goal is actually not the most important thing. The most important thing, the most important outcome that clients get out of the program is the process that we go through on our way toward that goal and the connection with spirit, with their higher selves, their truer selves, with the bigger world around them that we find that we uncover in the course of six months. So everyone starts with a six-month commitment, and that's to allow us to go deep and to really individualize the process for them so that when they leave, they have a better sense of how 
spirit, how their body, how their whole true self speaks to them and how that resonates with the broader world so that they can keep applying that process, keep listening to those voices after the six months ends, regardless of what goal they're working toward. So the goal they set in the program could be to start their own business or to plan a move for their family to a new place, or it could be to find out what their goal is. Again, the goal is not the most important piece. And then once the six months is over, there are options to continue that are more flexible, but everybody starts with six months. What I've learned in the process of creating and marketing, I have learned so much in the process of developing Shine Your Light. I think the biggest thing is that whatever it is in building my business, in building the program, in marketing, it it has to be authentic to flow. It has to be authentic to work. So I would find myself spinning in my head about something or um, I would meet a lot of resistance either internally or externally, like something just wasn't working and I was getting frustrated. And I learned over a couple rounds of this that there was a good reason for that, that it was because what I was doing wasn't authentic or it wasn't the right way to go about it for me and what I was creating. So now what what that has shifted for me is when I meet resistance, when I catch myself spinning or something just isn't working, I see it as an opportunity to investigate, to get deeper. And on the other side of that, I know that there's going to be more flow, more magic, that my program and my business are going to be more resonant with the people I'm serving and they're going to be more authentically me. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty big. I created Shine Your Light because I myself am a busy mom. And I found as soon as I became a mom that all the work I'd been doing on getting out of my own way, on finding my own voice, on getting to know my magic and getting back to a spiritual connection that I had had glimpses of throughout my life that all that work, I didn't have time to just kind of let it go at its pace anymore. I felt this urgency to really boost forward for so many reasons, to be a role model for my daughter, to model for her what I wanted her to see is possible, to live in my full self, to provide for her as a solo mom. I found that what I was making before wasn't enough to support us sustainably and that that was causing stress that got in the way of me being the mom I wanted to be. So I needed to make more money and that meant building a business that was more authentic to me so that that my energy could flow so that I could free up my time and attention and energy to be a better mom to her and so that money could happily flow into our lives and and back out again into the community. I could just see all of these things connected and that I really needed to step up. So I marshaled all of my resources, all of my experience, all of my training, all of my support, all of my intuition. I really just tapped into the spirit in every way I knew how, and it boosted me forward. And I wanted to help. I want to help other moms do the same. And life as a mom looks different than life as a non-parent. We have different constraints on our time and our attention and our bodies. So I wanted to create a program that worked for that, worked within those constraints and honored the deep sensitivity of women and the unique magic that we all have to offer. And that's why I am totally in love with my program. Hi, my name's Gail Reich and I live in Chicago, Illinois. I recently started a coaching program called Your Coach Gale, and I am your guide to navigating overwhelmed adolescents. I see a lot of adolescents in my practice, and I work with many parents who love and care and want to support them and don't always know where to start. And what I mean by overwhelm is kind of anything but calm. So from just being socially anxious or depressed to 
having suicidal ideation or being so overwhelmed that they're turning to substances to cope. You know, sometimes it can be really scary for a parent. You know, for example, I'm thinking of a parent whose child uh, expressed suicidal ideation and it was really almost like walking on eggshells, not knowing how to approach, what to say, am I saying the right thing? Would I make it worse? Like so many questions can come up um, with something that feels really unfamiliar and, and feels so scary because, you know, it feels like saying the wrong thing could um, go the wrong way. So I created this program because one, I want to help parents have the support they need to help these adolescents that are struggling. And I've just learned so much in my trainings over the years through doing learning about the nervous system in my sensory motor training to kind of ways of navigating shame and vulnerability through my training with Brene Brown. And I just want to take all that knowledge and put it in the world for people to use um, who aren't necessarily seeing me for therapy. So I created this program. It is one-on-one. We meet three times over video chat and there's just a little bit of homework in between. And I just I'm teaching parents, you know, the knowledge base of how to understand kind of how overwhelm shows up in their teenagers and themselves and ways to support it and skills to pull from so that you're uh, ready with tools in your toolbox as you approach these situations. And then um, kind of ways to communicate around conflict because inevitably it's not going to go perfectly and and it's helpful to have a skill set around that as well. Um, So I really, really want to help parents feel confident so that everyone can get the support they need. In this process of creating and marketing my program, I've also learned how hard it is to kind of be confident myself. So it's so easy to come up with creative ideas and thoughts for other people's programs, but somehow it's really tough for my own. And I've just found um, collaborating so important, like more important than I thought I would. Throughout my mastermind experience, I've collaborated with two individuals consistently who are like-minded and have similar programs, but not quite the same. And I think we've really helped each other to, you know, get out of our heads when we're stuck. And and I think I've helped them with the creativity and ideas, and they've really helped me think and see things differently than I could on my own. And marketing-wise, I'm so excited to collaborate as well. I plan on giving talks together. Talks are something that I feel the least confident in. And so doing it with someone feels great, but also it's amazing because we can just reach more people that way and more people can get a wider variety of, of information. So I, I find it both really exciting, but, and really helpful. So that's, that's something I've learned and to really hold on to the fact that collaborating is so important is, um, there's nothing wrong with it. Like I don't have to do everything by myself with this, which is, which is kind of great. Thank you so much, Laura, Rebecca, Monica, and Gail. To learn more about Dr. Laura Casper, go to cofounderconflictdisruption.com. To learn more about Rebecca Lee, go to justlivingtherapy.org. To learn more about Monica Bayan, go to monicabayan.com. The spelling is M-O-N-I-C-A-B-A-H-A-N.com. To learn more about Gail Reich, go to yourcoachgail.me. I also want to thank Cosmo Palms for editing this podcast. And I want to thank you so much for listening and for listening to this entire pod series, which if you haven't, go back and hear the really great stories from other entrepreneurs and get on the wait list for Create Your Program at rebeltherapist.me slash create. All right, I'll be back next time.